Okay, so welcome back to this next video on oocyte activation and the involvement of calcium waves, basically. Okay, so we have seen how uh, when the sperm touches the oocyte, what begins to happen is you propagate uh, forward uh, in the cytoplasm waves of calcium signaling, basically. I.e. calcium goes up initially nearby where the um, sperm touches because of the release of intracellular stores. That then causes uh, the um, intracellular stores to be released in the neighbouring portion of uh, the endoplasmic reticulum, and meanwhile, the uh, calcium, the IP3 receptors in this initial portion are starting to close, so calcium will fall there, as in this graph here, and uh, when uh, the neighbouring portion becomes active, uh, then calcium will go up because the IP3 receptors are opening. So it's this propagation of the activation, uh, the opening of these IP3 receptors that is propagating forward. This um, transient opening and then closing of the IP3 receptors propagates forward, and with it, that causes a transient release of calcium, so a spike in the calcium level, which then falls, and that propagates forward throughout the um, oocyte. Okay, and then you don't just get one wave of calcium, these continue propagating basically, and the frequency with which you propagate uh, these calcium waves seems to be proportional to inositol, the concentration of inositol 145 trisphosphate that you have in the cytoplasm. Okay, right, but we don't understand the mechanisms underlying that yet. So, now then, um, let's have a look at a little bit of experimental fact that we do know about these calcium waves, which is, if you take the Xenopus oocyte, you can block these calcium waves, and you can block it with a drug known as heparin. Okay, so heparin um, has a number of uses in uh, pharmacology and indeed in medicine, uh, but the use that we're going to look at in this video is that heparin is actually a competitive antagonist for IP3 receptors. So heparin basically binds to this IP3 binding site of uh, the um, IP3 receptor subunit. So this is the IP3 binding site. Okay, so the drug heparin is going to go in. So I'll draw heparin as this little square here. Heparin is going to go in. It's going to bind to this IP3 binding site. Uh, and it's going to uh, not activate... Um, the conformational change in the um, subunit of the IP3 receptor, which IP3 does activate. Uh, so um, it's just going to sit in that binding site and stop IP3 from binding. So it's a competitive antagonist for this binding site, basically. Competitive antagonist. Okay, uh, so as I say, it does not change the conformation of the receptor. So the inhibitory calcium binding site will still remain and the stimulatory calcium binding site will not remain basically and it's just going to block IP3 from being able to bind and change the conformation. So if we administer this drug heparin to the, Xenop the Xenopus oocyte we would expect it to block the calcium waves because basically it's going to go in there, it's going to bind to all of the IP3 receptors, it's going to block IP3 from being able to bind, and if IP3 cannot bind, then you cannot prime these IP3 receptors, i.e. you cannot um, take away the inhibitory calcium binding site and expose the stimulatory calcium binding site. So the inhibitory calcium binding site will remain exposed on all of these uh, IP3 receptors, and when this initial calcium influx comes in from the sperm touching uh, the oocyte membrane, uh, that uh, will come along and it will in now bind to this inhibitory calcium binding site on these IP3 receptors, and it will inhibit uh, the IP3 receptor, making it less likely to o open, basically. So, all of these IP3 receptors will be closed, and you won't get any release of calcium from the intracellular store. And remember, it's the release of calcium from the intracellular store that causes the rise in calcium concentration. This calcium coming in from here is minuscule compared to the release that you get from calcium uh, stores. Okay, so, basically, heparin, we would expect to block these um, calcium waves, and indeed it does, at least in Xenopus oocytes. But 
if we now use an oocyte from a different species, namely the sea urchin, if we use the sea urchin oocyte instead of the xenopus oocyte, we find something different, basically. So if we uh, administer the drug heparin to um, our uh, sea urchin oocyte, then basically what you see is an attenuation of the calcium wave. So if you actually measure the calcium waves, the rise in calcium concentration that you get everywhere is slightly lower. So you might, on this graph, it might look something like um, this rather than this. So the amount by which calcium rises everywhere is reduced, but you do still get a calcium wave that propagates throughout, through the cell, basically. So what's happening there? Why did heparin fail to, um, to block the um, calcium wave completely in the sea urchin oocyte? Well, basically, what happens in the sea urchin oocyte is that it's not just IP3 receptors that are involved in this calcium wave. It doesn't appear to be anyway. There seems to be another receptor, uh, which we've met, called the ryanodine receptor. Now, where should I draw this? Um, we'll draw it here, maybe. So, uh, another receptor is important, basically, in sea urchin oocytes, which is the ryanodine receptor. And somehow, this ryanodine receptor also seems to be being activated in this process and is um, involved in the calcium wave. So, if you just block the IP3 receptors, then uh, the ryanodine receptors are still there and they can release calcium, basically. But the mechanisms of how um, the sperm touching activates the ryanodine receptors are not well understood. But what we do think is the ryanodine receptors are involved in the sea urchin oocyte. And the uh, reason we think this is because if you use a drug which now blocks the ryanodine receptors, which is a drug known as rufidium red, which we've met before in this playlist because it also blocks the mitochondrial calcium uni uniporter, rufidium red. So rufidium red blocks ryanodine receptors. If you give rufidium red along with heparin, then you get no calcium waves, even in the sea urchin oocyte. If you just give rufidium red alone, then it's going to block the ranadine receptors, but the IP3 receptors are still active. So, again, what you see is an attenuation of the calcium wave, but it's not completely gone. So, uh, that suggests that the sea urchin oocyte is using two forms of calcium channel to release the intracellular stores of calcium in the calcium wave, uh, namely the IP3 receptor and the ryanodine receptor. And in order to completely block the calcium wave in the in the sea urchin oocyte, you have to administer not only heparin to block the IP3 receptors, but also rufidium red to block the um, ryanodine receptors.